Let's go ahead and get the meeting started uh, for Monday, November 4th at 6 p.m. Uh, all counselors are present and we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Just in that direction. That, that the picture is a flag. So yeah, sure. somewhere in that yeah. picture. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So with that, we'll open it up for public comment. Is there any comment from anyone in the audience? Or is there anyone online? Do we have anyone online? We have some folks online, but none of them have what they need to do at the moment. Okay. Great. With that, we'll move on to item 165 and we'll open up a public hearing for Island, Island Park Brewing LLC new liquor license application for 601. And I do believe we have Mark and Connor present. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. Excellent. Um, how's everything going? We had a wonderful Halloween party on Saturday, yeah. by the way. Yeah, <laughs> Participate in the stacking of kernels. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of extras if you want some. Oh, yeah. Don't tempt me. Yeah. <laughs> um, are there any questions or comments as far as public hearing? I have the report here as well from the Chief Lieutenant Hammond. No concerns on our end as we've had minimal issues with light guff and would expect the same with Island Park Brewing. And now uh, you also just had your ribbon cutting a couple months ago. Yes. Yeah, we open August 15th. <laughs> so we get a little bit of the summer, which was nice. And yeah, just full assortment of food. Excuse me? A full assortment of food. We actually are using we have food trucks. Food trucks. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So you'd be open through the winter? That's the goal. Yeah. 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 That's the goal. Yeah. Reduced hours, but ice brew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ice we can, yeah. We can do that. So I move to approve a new liquor license for Island Park Brewing LLC. Well, let's close it first. Okay. Public hearing. Sorry, Thank okay. you. And we'll move on to item 166. Now you can go ahead. Uh, I move to approve a new liquor license for Island Park Brewing LLC. Second. Okay. We have a motion, a second. Any discussion? Questions? All right. All in favor? All are in favor. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much for coming in. Guys. See you have a nice evening. Yes. You too. We could make it longer. <laughs> That's That's longer. You guys are great. <laughs> just, just need to sign. Thank you. Okay. Oh, right. sign See you, everybody. Cool. We'll hand this to you in just a minute. Here. Oh, we do have it. Okay. Yep. Right there. Thanks for doing it. All right. We don't have all this longer. So we all sat right now. Well, so <laughs> you can even pick that up. I'll wait for it. Yeah. Okay. One stop shop. Should be great. All right. Yeah. Take a moment. <laughs> we'll move on to, uh, in the meantime, we'll move on yeah. to item 167, discussion and consideration of potential community resilient partnership projects raised at the October 30th community forum. So just last Wednesday, and I see Steve McDermott is here in the audience, who is our facilitator for that. Uh, Steve, if you'd like to give us a little rundown. Yeah, and I'm assuming here is fine, given the OWL technology. So just a brief background, I sent in a memo, and maybe I'll just do a quick poll of hands at to see who had an opportunity to review that. And if not, I'll go into a little bit more detail. And if everybody read it, I can. I did not read Great. So, so I'll do did a quick. You, wait, did you actually send a memo or did you say you were about to send a memo? And I did send a memo make, with some requested attachments that were part of the package. I, I, don't, I, think I, I didn't get the attachments. Well, don't worry, I'll go right through it. Because <laughs> I was waiting, I was a little bit for a follow-up. Yeah, because I didn't get it. I don't remember I thought you were going to just do it after. Okay. Nope, I got it. And it's in your package. It's in the link. Don't worry, we'll go right through it. Okay, go ahead. So on October 30th, the town hosted a community forum to talk about how the town might think about applying to the community resilience partnerships, resilience partnerships, community action plan. So the community resilience partnership is a program administered by the state. Community action grants make grants available to municipalities, tribal governments, and a few other eligible entities. This round, they're making grants up to $75,000 available to single entities or $175,000 available to multiple entities applying in a collaborative process. Yeah, question. Is this is it the same as last time where it has to be like identified as one project, can't be broken up? It is one cost. Okay. Well, that that is my understanding. Okay. I haven't checked in with the administrators to see if that's a continued understanding. I don't know why they would change it, but 
Yeah, I didn't see anything that would indicate that they would. Okay. So those, like, like Aaron, uh, Aaron just asked, those funds can be used towards one project. There's two different project types, projects that don't require match, and then projects that do require matching funds. So when we have the community forum, we focus on the list of 70 to 75 suggested community actions. And if a community opts to apply for a grant and one of their, um, their project is supported by a community action, no match is required. So we focused on those types of projects. We, um, I'll skip through the process, but there were seven community members there. Uh, community members might be bearing the lead a little bit as that many of the members were members from this council and from the planning board. But it's a really nice hour long, hour 15 minute conversation about the way that we're seeing the community impact by, impacted by a changing climate, increasing storm severity, or reliance on um, greenhouse gas emissions and you know impacting utility costs. So first we focused on the way that the community is being impacted and we use that to guide a discussion through those 70 action items. So a way to winnow it down a little bit. So through that process, there were 11 actions that were decided or that were identified by that group as like, these might be worthwhile to look into. Through that process, we then engaged in a little bit of dot democracy. <laughs> where each person was given three sticky dots to put up on a board of like the item that they think might be the to suggest up to the town council to take a look at and for municipal staff to work on. The three that were received the most votes were an open space plan, which is actually several items on section E, energy efficiency lighting upgrades, and install, installing electric vehicle charging stations. There were three others that received less, so adopt policies that encourage or incentivize low food production, adopt stream smart crossing guidelines, and adopt ordinances that encourage EV charging infrastructure. But those first three are the ones that received the three most or the most votes. When the group also discussed these, one of the things that they noted was that several of these steps could be taken potentially without seeking additional funds, like adopting a stream st stream smart crossing guidelines and applying that to the existing Winthrop zoning ordinance, or working to see what infrastructure exists within the community already to encourage community gardens or growing of local foods. I know Anthony has a memo where he talks about those pro the top three and what it would look like for the community to vote on or for the council to vote on. I just want to take a moment to recognize Fire Chief Dan Brooks, uh, Joel Stonington, uh, Director of Facilities for Winthrop School District, and Wendy Dennis, who is a limnologist, which was a new word to me, at Havasi Watershed, who helped me, who helped me talk or educated me about some of the ways they're seeing the community be impacted, which helped start, start the conversation in many ways. That's a lot of information for all you all. I think the, oh, the only other pieces of information that didn't directly relate to the community forum where the amount, of, the amount of money that will be made available through the grant, which is just under $7.5 million total, that's the total pool. And you might remember last time, one of the reasons it was really exciting to apply was that only first time applicants were eligible to apply. This time it is not limited to just first time or second time applicants. So there's potentially up to 225 qualifying eligible entities. So thinking about a grant application that will score well and be feasible may be a consideration in addition to what the community members suggested that you might want to think about. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Stephen, thanks for coming up and uh, taking the time to do all this. Being involved. A uh, quick question right out of the gate came to me is you're talking <laughs> about the 75 or the 175. Would the multiple, multiple entities, is that multiple entities in the town, or is that talking about both other towns that could was that other one was a shared? Yeah, multiple eligible entities, and those are units of government, so it would be a different town. Okay. Well, clear. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I believe tonight we're looking for some direction for what we want to see for potential community resilient partnership projects. Um, like Steve said, there was some votes. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation, and thank you for facilitating that last Wednesday. Um, and right down here, I mean, these were some of these, the, the votes from community members, and that that's subject to. Yeah, I think if we're if we're going to pursue something, 
I mean, I'd like to see electric vehicle charging stations because we don't have any really. Um, okay. um, so just a couple of thoughts. All three of these projects, I think, are um, really worthy of pursuing. The And I agree with you that EV chargers is something that we don't really have a, yeah. a lot of in our community. But in doing just some initial research, there's a lot to consider when it comes to EV chargers. The type of charger, the mm -hmm. type of units we have, how many ports there would be in it, where they would be located. Depending upon where they're located, you might have to install some power there, whether they be pedestals versus wall units. And so I think that that, along with the open space plan, I think we need some more planning before we submit an application for that. Um, as Jim just mentioned, you know, we do have an opportunity, hopefully at some point in the future, to get some other towns together where we can apply for up to $175,000 and have a regional uh, open space plan. But that's going to take some coordination and, and planning. I contacted the town managers in Wayne, Manchester, Refield, and uh, Monmouth. I only heard back from the, from the Manchester uh, town manager who was supportive, but they're in the process of their comp plan. Right now, they're updating their comp plan. And so they need to finish that before they, they work on an open space plan. And even if we were to collaborate with some other communities on that, we're going to need a memorandum of understanding that's going to take some time to develop as part of the application process. So um, Steve just mentioned about having a project that's going to score well. And I do think our LED lighting conversion would score well. We've got lots of information that we can provide about that. And in addition to that, you know, we'll be making use of efficiency main incentives. And so that's something that's going to score well with the Community Resilience Partnership is just being able to, to partner with Efficiency Main on that. So those are just sort of my thoughts. I'm okay it. if it's energy efficiency. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. Andy, did you have a question? Um, uh, just in general, um, I'm probably not going to be supportive of anything that isn't revenue neutral. Okay. Yeah, we, we just keep coming up with all these little projects, spend money. Yeah, but energy mm -hmm. efficiency will be. Well, if it's energy it's neutral. One time, it's a one-time. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. that can be energy neutral. I mean, it saves us enough money over so, so many I'm, years. When we did talk about this at one time, I was yeah. really pro putting it towards our, our lighting, our energy efficient lighting. And I apologize, I didn't get to read all of this, but kind of looking it over really quick, I'm also in favor. I mean, I don't know if it would fall into something to do with the... Uh, they're talking about harmful uh, algae blooms in, the, in our waterways and stuff like that. I mean, I think that's on page H3. I don't know if that would pack into it. I mean, I understand that everybody wants to have the charging stations. I, I, I'm not saying it's wrong. I, I just think there's more deep diving into that would probably need to be done and where it would be located because it's going to be have a spot for it. It's going to take up a parking spot and we're already kind of limited downtown. So do we place it there? So have some up by some buses. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, but I, I would think that I, I think we would capitalize we really well because I think our price tag on that um, lighting would fall right into this. And so, oh, it would okay. some of the heavy costs from the town. Okay. And, and so, if you haven't read the memo, what, what applying that $75,000 to that project would do, it would buy down the payback on that to two years. So, the, the estimated cost of energy savings annually is $26,000. After two years, the, the project would be paid for. And yeah, and I, I want to see whatever project we would look at uh, pursuing. I want like a, like our previous grant application, and, and I got it was successful too, um, is I want to squeeze every penny out of it as we can. Yeah. Uh, and I would be, I mean, obviously, I think the EV charges wouldn't take much to do that. Um, the open space planning, I would have to know a little bit more, I think, as far as how this funding would go towards that and if we would be able to maximize that benefit to offset future potential costs to developing that plan because that is a plan that needs to occur. So I would say those two items I certainly I know I think the LED, like like you said, we're that would be two years off of payback. And I mean we're doing that. We're kind of already committed to it. So I don't see that. one or the other is fine. I would just want to make sure that we would be able to realize the most out of the back of the box. Yeah. Yeah. 
With, with the EV charging station, I mean, I was surprised to learn that the, the cost of those ranges, depending upon the details, $3,000 to $20,000 per unit. Yeah, right. And, and so, you know, there's a big difference between getting three units versus getting 15 units, you know. Right. So so I think that that's why it, it needs a lot more research to figure out what I it agree. is that we want to do. I agree. Anthony, can I, I think when you're thinking about the open space plan, and I think open space plan is a bit limiting mm -hmm. in the name of it because it can do a lot to tell you where is your prime farmland, where is uh, where is your land that's most suitable for commercial development, where is your land that's most suitable for housing, and where is that pristine land that you should consider preserving as open space. And I think that could really feed into where the town thinks about EV charging as well. I think one of the things the Downtown Revitalization Committee is thinking about is how do we make winter sticky for people who come in in the summer and in the winter and leave peeping in the fall so they don't just drive through to get to the lake, right? How do they come in, stay, go to Sully's, go to uh, Black Lock Barbecue? How do they go for a walk? How do they come for Freckles uh, Vault Weekend? How do we get them to go to the other stores as well? And I think that's really valuable. And some of these other projects that we think about them long term could have really resounding impact. Um, but again, on that, the goal of the session the other day wasn't to come up with something and say, you, you know, the council should vote on this. It was to guide conversation. One of the things I liked about that conversation with the open space that I didn't really consider that was mentioned was uh, doing the regional with the other surrounding towns and then kind of even mapping out um, patterns for the directions of animals migrating or moving around in the area. So kind of directing them okay. through the woods and things like that. I thought that was really neat. And then working with our partners like the Kennebec Land Trust to say, this has been identified as a high value transportation corridor for, I don't know, maybe there's an endangered bird that I'm unaware of yeah. that we could work with, right? Bi uh, biomes and fauna and flora don't care where municipal boundaries are. <laughs> <laughs> and the water will flow from Reedfield into Winthrop. So considering those those options mm -hmm. might be really a, a good medium term plan. Yeah. And especially with the increase up to I think 175,000 between two towns or whatnot. Ideally we could get like Reedfield and Manchester to apply mm -hmm. for one, yeah. Winthrop and uh, Wayne to apply for another, and Monmouth and Leeds to apply for a third. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. Um once upon a time, in a place far, far away, a long, long time ago, as they used to say, uh, I served on a committee here that was trying to get the trail systems to coordinate from town to town. So you didn't get to the end of the trail. You can make it over to Manchester, you know, and uh, off the Granite Hill Road. Eventually, you can make your way into Hollowell to the River Rail Trail. And uh, we didn't have water well. And I'm just hoping we do better this time. Yeah, I, okay. I don't. I don't think that's a one-off or unique situation where communities are where interested groups are trying to work cross community. It can be really challenging. I think about the the ITS for snowmobiling. Yeah. I think about the different rail trails. Whenever there's a connector point, there's this huge celebration because it's not just making the trail longer. I mean, it is a lot of work to figure yeah. out how to make those multi-municipal yeah. projects work. So, so I mean, the other yeah. thing I have to floor is that I'm really not um, going to support. Uh, discussing the appropriate siting of solar farms again. We already changed the rules once. I don't think it's fair to citizens to keep changing the rules. There's Simple as that. From someone online? Yeah, so uh, Jill uh, Ippolini, who from our uh, Conservation Commission has her hand up. So Jill, you wanted to speak? Uh, uh, Jill, if you'll unmute yourself, please. Can you hear me okay? Um, if, if we go with, I, I like the idea of a regional open space plan coordinating with the other towns. Um, you said you had spoken to a, a couple of other towns, Anthony, about, about this. And I, I, I guess two things, I, I, how, maybe Steve knows this, when will the next deadline for projects be? And will there still be the 175,000 for multiple um entities applying Bill, i don't know when the next application round will open the community resilience partnership is has historically been funded by budget line items through the biennial or supplemental budget process so this will use the remaining funds through the remaining the existing biennial budget and my belief or understanding is that 
the community resilience partnership and it's the office it's nested within are working to retain more funds for future projects. I can speak to program design and I think that actually may be impacted by the success of this round. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that's all postulating about things I have no information about. Can you give us a timeline for this? Yeah. December 17th or when the applications are due and they've historically made the allocations within a three month period and funds are out relatively quickly, right, Anthony? Yes, yeah. Um, they were great to work with when we got our first award, uh, as was Efficiency Maine and as was our qualified partner, uh, Dave's Appliance. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a similar dynamic uh, with uh, with Affinity uh, LED as well. Yeah, I, I, I guess my, uh, my other uh, comment would be that this, an open space plan was one of the top 10 priorities in the 2010 comprehensive plan. It's listed in, in the 2024 plan as a short-term goal. The short-term goals are, are supposed to be uh, completed, realized within two years. Um, I, I, I think it would be great if we could do that. Uh, it would have many benefits that we talked about at the meeting um, at the library last week. Um, I just think the, the Conservation Commission, the town council, and the town manager are cited as the people responsible for implementing. I, I would assume the town planner would be critical to that also. Um, I, I, I guess as a member of the Conservation Commission, if, if we're not in, if, if this doesn't, if the application for this December doesn't include funding for open space planning, Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know where this was where Bill's voice was going to come from. Hey, we'll bring for commercial right now. Baby, <laughs> yes. we'll come back. Yeah. 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 Let's see if I can uh, supposed to shoot a shot. Mm -hmm. While well, we're, well, we're trying to figure that one out, how does the open space plan affect zoning? Will we be taking areas that people own and saying you have to keep this as open space? No, my and I'm not an expert in open space plans. My understanding is that an open space plan will look at the community and say, this is existing open space, and here's how you That's may want to prioritize it and preserve it. But how, it what is the action on that? After you have an open space plan? Yeah, so, say, say you have an open space plan, you identify a uh, somebody's property as valuable farmland. Yeah. Does that mean that uh, we there's any sort of restriction on it that where they can't develop it. That makes sense. Yeah, not, just, not just because of the plan. I think you can think about it like a comprehensive plan. It is a document to guide and can be used as a resource, but it is not regulatory. So I think your question, Roy. Let's say somebody does. So something. does it encourage? You have to put. Yes. You have it's to put more carrot than stick, in, in my opinion. You have you to put it in open space. space. And if you're going to, if you want to preserve it, you have to put it in open space. Yes. Yeah, so the say town can't well, say. I mean, Do you have to put it into open space, or is the town going to? Tr are we going to try to push to say change zones so that you can't do you can't develop it? Is it is it something that the town's going to take action on to decide what home landowners are going to do with their land, or is it well they can through ordinance through zoning through that sort of thing? On rural is, areas. I, What's that? Like putting restrictions on rural areas. Exactly. Right. I think that's a Develop. question for the council and how they might approach that. I think. I think of plans. I would not be. I would never be. I think to respect yeah. anybody's property. Yeah, I mean, so, I think no. plans are for guiding, right? But say there was a parcel. Say there was. That happened. Say there was twenty five hundred acres, and I don't know if that's a lot for Winthrop or not a lot for Winthrop. But say there was twenty five hundred acres of farmland, and somebody came to the town council and said, "And I think that should be actually zoned for." It's not their property, right? Let's pretend that in this hypothetical winter that we're talking about, it's not their property, but they say, I think that should be zoned for industrial uses. The town, the planning board might say, well, let's go back and look at the resources that we have and decide how we can help make this decision. So I think it's a resource to help inform decision-making, not something that comes in once it's stamped, says uh, you have 50 acres in this area to prioritize, you can't do anything now. Yeah, but what, I guess my point is what, Say the town decides, okay, well, the resources are good. We're going to turn it into commercial space. 
So how does the town take action on doing that? Is that something, uh, or, or does the town, does the planning board, does, is it, is it something that the planning board takes action on trying to change the zoning, change whatever they need to change to make that now commercial space, not farmland? They don't, they don't have to, but again, I think it goes back to the process and it can be used as something to inform their decisioning. Could they use it to say, we didn't know about this pocket of highly valuable um, deer, deer yards, right? The problem is somebody owns that property. Right. So somebody this, been paying this, process, this process doesn't in intercede that. I mean, that can be happening on the zoning, right. zoning period. What this, what open space does is say it identifies areas within the town boundaries that would, the town would benefit from maintaining open space in it. it and correct me, Don, if I'm wrong, but I mean, say, think of other towns like Freeport or Yarmouth, somewhere down there where they have open spaces, public spaces in the town that aren't developed, say, down near the downtown area where they can have trails and uh, walkways and uh, recreational opportunities. That's what this would do. It's non-regulatory. It wouldn't change the zone. Zoning still has to go through zoning processes, changes, period. I mean, this would never be able to then dictate a use of property, private property, but it identifies where, say, in the town, you know, say downtown here, I think how it would be applicable here would be next to the mill stream that goes from, uh, it's not Smith's garage, uh, Park's, garage. Park's garage, thank you, um, to North Cross Point, and, and then somehow incentivizes yeah, and I think, I mean, one piece is regulatory She's land use. We all know the planning board, the zoning board, um, but there are carrots and sort of sticks. So, and they're design, there are ways to go about it with design. So say you amend your subdivision regulations, um, you've identified through your plan where the prime farm areas are and you want to protect those soils. Maybe the subdivisions in those areas are designed differently. Maybe the roads are shorter, um, there's, you know, the narrower so there's not as much pavement ways to help protect the environment to cluster so that open space can be remained without necessarily uh taking away from someone's ability to develop it so there there are ways to do it so is that done uh, in a regulatory nature that is regulatory but you could also yeah. talk about conservation easements um the main farmland trust has a, a they have a whole manual and a bunch of ways that towns can work with local farmers to try to encourage local agriculture and, and to keep them going. So there, I mean, there is always that regulatory piece, but there's going to be a lot of carrots that you can What's important? I just, uh, uh, with the open space, I'm not a proponent for telling somebody what they're going to do with the property. I have a question from Bruce. Uh, changing stuff to, uh, for the towns, for the town's benefit, for the people that don't own the land, dictating what you should do with your land. You know, the people, uh, uh, I understand the open space plan is good for anybody who wants to buy into it, but uh, you know that the a lot of the people that are pushing for an open space plan don't own the prop, don't own a lot of property. They're not donating their property to open space, and I don't think they should be pushing others to to uh, pushing to change regulations for other people's property. Um, people pay taxes on that, and they've purchased the property. It's 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 not something that they should be. Uh, pushing to regulate further. Uh, that's my opinion on it. I've got a question from Bruce, one from Andy, and Jill's back online. Yeah. Jill. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry I missed part of the discussion, but, uh, but I would think, too, I mean, the, an open space plan would identify wetlands, natural resources, some of the, some of the things that, that uh, in terms of climate, I mean, if uh, wetlands are great for absorbing and, and holding water, I mean, you think about your culverts, think about um, it, it, it's just a, it's a plan. It's, it's identifying what, what we have. And uh, it, it's certainly, it, it would have no regulatory authority in itself. I think the, uh, I attended your meeting. It was very well done. Um, I think the $75,000 could be utilized um, to help defray the cost of the lighting systems that we've contracted with Infinity, uh, help defray some of the costs and cut down the term of the loan. 
uh, by what two years? You know, um, so I think that would probably where I'd like to see that directed, and it would be something that would be immediate. Uh, so there would be a positive return on that grant. Is that a motion? I can make it as such. Uh, Andy, so Did you have and it's not on that particular subject, so if you want to go ahead, then I'll speak. Certainly. Any more discussion? I, don't I, I just want to chime back in on it. And, and yeah. given, given the time frame with the application, it sounds like there's a lot more discussion to be done on this. I think my favor is really pushing it towards the lighting because I think it's yeah. it's it's in place. Yeah. We have it set to go. We can apply for it now and get it done. It's an action item that can be done and completed in a timely fashion. It was a lot so, of leg work. Yeah, that I, I just this thing, leg work I think there's I think some good that, things yeah. should should look at this. There's no question about it. Yeah. But for, for this person personal uh, uh for the first um you know resilience program to get the money now I think that that seventy five thousand benefit that right now today and I think it would be beneficial. So that's my opinion. I second it. That's an option. <laughs> So one last question I have for you, Jill. Do you have an idea about how much you think that it would cost for an open space space plan? Do you think it would be a full seventy-five thousand? Uh Dawn has some figures on that 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 she got. Um I think it's it's it, it, Dawn can answer that better than I can. I just got a few from different communities. One of them that the Conservation Commission had particularly called out as being good was for Bridgeton. Um, but it ranged from, they were 45, but it ranged anywhere from a ballpark of 9,000 to 75. And that, I mean, the scope of the services provided is very wide. So part of it depends on what um, the town's looking for in a plan. But okay. that was the range by that. How much was the one for Bridgeton? Bridgeton was 45. Okay. And I have looked at that. They have an excellent website and an excellent plan. Okay. And a lot of these, uh, just a, one more question, if I could. A lot of these programs, they covered under the comprehensive program for further discussion later on. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, I think the energy efficiency lighting program would be priority to this money to good use and defray some of the costs from the taxpayers. So your motion is to put the money towards the energy efficiency lighting upgrade? I would make a motion to approve um, the potential community resilient partnership project uh, to use the grant money towards the purchase of high efficiency lighting already contracted with the town. Okay. So, okay. All in favor? Do you have any more discussion? Just quickly, that's the only thing we would use it for at this time. Correct. Yes. Okay. Sir. Yep. I'm, in, okay, I'm ready. All in favor? All in favor. Okay. Thank you, Jill, for you know, moving did, in. I did have a comment, Jill. Yes, we've already beat it to death. Okay. I think we beat that to death. So okay. And that's all right. So moving on to item 168, consideration of approval of the minutes of the October 7th, October 21st, and October 28th, 2024 council meetings. So moved. Second. All in favor? All in favor? Thank you. And item 169, consider of recommendations from the appointments committee. Well, I have two recommendations for appointments. One is Mr. Stephen McDermott. Uh, he is... Uh, he has applied for the Comprehensive Plan Implementation Implementation Committee, and I would uh, I'd like to appoint him. Make a motion to that. I'd like to make a motion to appoint him. Second. Okay. On the which committee? You can do them both. Comprehensive together. Plan Implementation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, and then yeah, uh, Connor McFarland. Okay. For the I believe Cemetery Committee. That's me, by the way. Thank um, you for coming over that. Yeah. 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 Th thanks for coming in. Yeah. Have you spoken with the cemetery committee regarding that? I have not. No. Thank okay. you. Thanks. I, I was a reappointment. No, that's no. No, that's no. No, it's a no. No, it's a no. No, it's a no. So they don't have 
four people, I believe, on it. Good luck to you, Stephen. I served on the yeah. last implementation phase for the 2010 like plan, and it was an uphill battle all the way. Uh, yeah, Andy, I led my son's t-ball so. team to an yeah. undefeated season <laughs> this year. Yeah. All right. I'm comfortable. I think we can get a thing right here. I'm comfortable. I move to confirm the recommendations of the Appointments Committee. Second. Okay. All in favor? All in favor, thank you. Thank you, Connor. I really appreciate it. Yeah, happy to have it. Oh, yeah, that's fun. All right, yeah. moving on to other business. Is there any public comment? Anything online? No. Okay, so we'll move on to the town manager's report when you're ready. Yes. Um, okay, that's it. You're ready? Always. Always. Set. Yes. Uh, so I got a uh, email um, I made today from Andy Bl uh, Blanchard. So you'll recall he was the one who was requesting the uh, uh, the engine brakes prohibited signs, and he's come up with uh, two suggestions. Uh, one from Route 202 on top of the hill, approximately across from where Pet Farm Road meets Route 202. Uh, the side with traffic heading to Augusta. And then the other sign would be um, on the opposite side of the road at Route 202 on top of the hill immediately after Caprera Food Service equipment. So that was his suggestion. If that sounds West, westerly of Caprera? Uh, with traffic heading to Winthrop. Well, so that would be yeah. west. west. So, um, so if that sounds good to you folks, what we can do is is go ahead and write that as an amendment to the ordinance. Well, that's uh, Any, you know, I, I, I don't I don't go with that. That's okay. a long that's first of all coming eastbound. You're coming down a yeah. hill. You yeah, know I what I mean? Come out of that intersection, and I uh, I would like them to be able to break. Yeah, I, yeah, but I don't I don't think it's. And slow down. I see them use their engine yeah. braking. Yeah, they have to from compare. You think, Roy, You're not going to go full full throttle. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind a sign that says "Please be considerate," but I, but I don't, and I don't think it's an act of the law. I don't think the one. Yeah, there, there already is one by where the old cops of Castmart used to be on the westbound side. The Jake Bridge sign. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's still there. Joe Young put it up years ago. But I want them to get near where a couple of guys so but where the you know. state farm is now. Oh okay. coming down the hill west. I think that's a little further than well, you know what would be recommended. I was I was thinking at the bottom of the hill up to the top of like where Main Street is because it's such a subtle. But I mean, there's no way from the top of the prairies down that hill that we should be putting any sign. Oh, my God, could you imagine if a trailer isn't truck it, went through a car because they weren't breaking out? Mm -hmm. saying, isn't it scheduled just for nighttime? I mean, I don't care what time. It should be in the day at all. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. Well, but even I, nighttime. I know on 135, 133. I mean, what's nighttime, too? More of a on the other side, you can hear them. 4.30 in the morning, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake breaks yeah. going down the hill. Yeah. And so get p.m. to 6 a.m.? Correct. Yeah. I mean, I get it, but boy. I don't, I don't really like the idea. I mean, if there's like a deer that jumps out or a car that's turning, then of course they're going to still break. I think it's just more of a deterrent. Well, so that see, they still have brakes. It's just the exhaust brake. Yeah. 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 yeah the jig brake. Yeah. 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 Which helps slow them down. Otherwise, yeah, it just, it's not going to slow them. They should be going slower. They should be, yeah. Uh, oh. And I, I mean, where where is his property actually located? Narrow's gone. No. Narrow's gone. Uh, right by the, by the old A frame. Yeah. yeah. Right there by just south, just east of the vet. Yeah. Which that one, like coming the other way, I feel that's fine. I mean, that's such a, 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 a subtle grade going into that, but coming the other way. Yeah. Is that's steep. Yeah. And there's not really anybody coming in or off that section. So unless you're right. coming off of, uh, Horseshoe, horseshoe would be the only one. And that turning right there from 130, was it 135? Okay, Stanley Road. 130. And, and, and that's the center road. That'd be a nightmare. Someone yeah, didn't stop, or, you know. Yeah, so, and then they say, yeah. well, I, I yeah. was, wasn't Jake breaking. I'm know. not, and I'm not in favor of it, but, you know. What if they stop at, the, like, the, if they extended it from the, on the other, road. on the other side, I, I think on that right, side, yeah. it's a little bit safer, yeah. probably. They're so, going to have to apply some brakes. I mean, right. you can't have a runaway. 
Right. I mean, we're gonna have the brakes. It's just not using. They're not using the the Jake brake. Yeah, they're not getting an exhaust. Which no, is really 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 so I'm not gonna see. At all. And the guys can get no, aggressive no, with it, but I not a not is it enforceable. No, it doesn't affect the intersection of I don't well, want to it's on a state highway. If it's on an ordinance, if it's an ordinance. But it's a state highway. What, well, but the DOT did say that, that that's up to the town. It yeah. is. But but okay. but but from an enforcement standpoint, it's it'd be awfully hard. You'd have to have a police officer actually with right, right there the event in order to cite so some more of a and how much is it really yeah. How much traffic is there really? Going through there from ten to six a.m. I mean, that's going to use. I don't know. I guess enough for them to put in our I class. can see southbound, right? South, you know, Hannaford coming up to Hannaford. There's trucks all night long. I suppose if anything's coming in from the north, it would go that way. Especially if they're heading for yeah, the interstate. But I, I always prefer. Us, you know, think you get better results from signs that say just please be considerate. That type so of thing. you're saying but ten to six? There's nothing. Yeah, that's right. That's what our noise ordinance says. Well, well, then, current you know, noise. then you get that attitude. You know, I'm going down the hill, and I don't have to use my. I can't use my jake brake, so I can't slow down. Well, the thing too is, is it depends on the load. If they have a load, what size load they have? I mean, if they may have to just that. I part. I mean, in, in my opinion, and I wonder what the liability of the town would be for putting that sign up, and then if there was, yeah. An accident. I, I'd, I'd be in favor of what you said, just to be considerate. Be considerate or something like that. Yeah, if there's a neighborhood, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Something. I mean, I know, you know, I just have a big old yeah, time. So and when I'm going, going down the hill, the the instead of riding the no, brakes, I yeah, downshift. Right. And it's just like, you the speed limit, just by downshifting. Right. So you're going to tell somebody, you know, when they can't use the jakes or something. Well, that's my, that's my other theory is like, well, we can't go in downtown and tell the train not to blow its horn, and then you're, you know. There's been a request. For I know. I know. <laughs> so, all right. Let's, so, how do you all feel? Mm -hmm. No. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll think about it and see if there's that's best. some other stretch. That's, that's the best. best. That's the best. Okay. So, just a couple of uh, real quick items. Tomorrow's election day. Uh, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The polls will be open uh, here. We actually uh, gave out 2,047 absentee ballots, which was about 700 more than the previous high from the last gubernatorial election. Wow. So, um, obviously, high interest. Um, uh, if you come to the uh, town office uh, and you're not voting, we ask that you please keep the parking lot clear because obviously we've got limited spaces and uh, a whole lot of people. Who are going to be cycling in now? So we're trying to keep the spaces. Right? All the staff is going to be parking uh, away from the building in order to open up spaces for voters. Um, and uh, whenever I get the uh, results from the council races, I'll be sure to post everyone just to let everyone know what the the results of those are. Um, you can usually hang out to the count. You, know, well, you can do that. It's going to be a very very late. <laughs> I never did. Uh, <laughs> Public Works Department, I'm uh, happy to say Kevin Doyle is uh, really confident, he says, his word, that we're going to be ready for snow. Uh, we have another trip around here today, so we've got one more opening and just got more interviews uh, slated. Good. So, That's good. Uh, that is good. Uh, I sent you folks an email earlier today, just a heads up, but uh, the MMA Health Trust, our uh, insurance mm -hmm. premiums are increasing in uh, 2025. A uh, nine percent increase on the uh, health insurance premiums. We need which, to uh, take that into consideration with the uh, union negotiations coming up. Uh, everything will be taken into consideration. Um, dental dental uh, premiums are up one percent, and everything else was flat. So uh, not not great news. And health insurance is going up everywhere with every old yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's all I had. Any. Yes, go ahead, James. Thank you, thank you. From the council. So, <clears throat> how are we doing with our real estate? Uh, in fact, it's on our calendar tomorrow. I think we finally hit the 90-day threshold with uh, with one of the properties. So, um, Roy, did you ever visit? No, but I, I will do that tomorrow. Okay. okay. What's the status of that contract with the real estate, with uh, oh, okay. realty? Can um, we... We put it out to bid. I think it was a three-year term. Was it a three-year term? Yeah. yeah. 
That's my question. So, so you know, it's, it's a lot of hoops you have to jump through with the law in the state now. And so uh, the biggest one is the 90 days, and then we alert all the abutters that they want to um, um, submit a bid, but they have to go through the same bid process as anybody else. Understood. I just didn't know how we were doing with with that progress. Yeah. I mean, I hope that people came in and that wanted to keep their homes, kept them and um, made arrangements. Yeah, and... for the most part, I think there were only, I think we had 10 foreclosures and I think only two of them were going to end up selling. And one of them is 17 Royal Lane and yeah. and the power of attorney in that case said, yeah, please just go ahead and sell it. The um, main housing authority actually had an interest in that property. There was a lien on that property. And so they said, we don't want it. So you guys do whatever you want to with it. So okay. um, one of the things we're going to have to determine is whether or not the trailer on that property is re is a livable space, Habitable. and it, it might be that it might be that we have to have that thing hauled away and and destroyed. And uh, of course, that will that that'll be something that we will recoup. Like I should say, we will recoup. Yeah. You're talking about Royal Street? No. Yeah. It's a oh, huge, huge, huge structure. <laughs> there, there are two structures. There are two structures on there. Yeah. The uh, the little garage apartment yeah. is apparently livable. It just um, uh, makes some of something more done. Where did you address that in? 17. Royal Street. Oh, is it right next door to? Uh, and the yes, terms of everybody else, but the one that was in the 135. You know? Yeah. Used to be All the terms are good. So good. Wonderful. Yeah. Should be a Three side questions. How is our diesel fuel purchasing go with the state? With the state, uh, fine. Um, post is it cost competitive with what with the fuel head well, was originally? It, what I have uh, told Public Works is to split up. And so that means that we have options to buy it either from DOT or Winthrop Fuel at this point until they, you know, if and when they told us, you know, you can't buy fuel here. And so what I've told them is we need to be conscious. That, I mean, the price fluctuates on a daily or weekly basis based upon the rack rate. And um, we want to go with the lowest cost unless someone's plowing during a storm and has to refill. And then we want them going to the nearest pump so that they can get right back out on, onto the road. So um, I've instructed Public Works to be mindful of the economics involved where we buy. The difference in the fuel from the state as opposed to Winthrop fuel. Correct. How, how much of a difference well, of a fluctuation uh, is there? Well, again, it fluctuates depending upon the rack rate. So could, could you get us a analysis of what we're paying currently and what Winthrop fuel has offered us to, to buy fuel? Well, they're, they're, they're I know it flows. Yeah, the fuel also fluctuates. So, but, yeah, but I mean, it's considerably do. cheaper from what I understand. Oh, really? Right. Yeah, a lot, I, if, as much as 20 have... cents a gallon. What is this? Really? The state? We had had a no, long-term contract with the fuel, then we'd have consistent have consistent pricing issue. Would we have um, to back, though? We have, just, like, we have it not. Would be like that, that, uh, like it what the last no. week's word compared to the But it uh, should be. Uh, and, and, and one of the things um, uh, Kevin has mentioned to me is the possibility of us, we looked into this at one point, building our own diesel fuel depot. Yeah. yeah. Um, investigated what an in-ground tank would cost and it was like four hundred thousand dollars and yes oh no 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 we should get in above the ground tank and so he's going to do some research to find out if that's something that is economical for us to pursue mm -hmm. i i know that it, it's cost prohibitive to put in one of those stations because you have to have a pump with a meter and locks i know that we installed the, an above ground tank uh, at my place of business we utilize about 75,000 gallons a week. Uh, so we buy it on the spot market, but it's quite an expensive endeavor to put an investment like that into the infrastructure and really a, a lot of money that, you know, we can just continue to buy it locally and yeah. it's less expensive. Yeah, well, and like you said, I mean, we just need to do the analysis. I'd like to see that at the next meeting, please. Uh, one, I have anybody else up. Uh, where do we stand with uh, the Anabasco Road property? I'm not talking, oh. uh, I'm talking the building. I understand. Yeah, I understand. Okay. still waiting on the uh, the from the uh, the EPA. Didn't we get a uh, didn't we get a uh, some information from them saying we didn't get any response from them at all? So I think I forwarded. 
to you folks the last email that I had from a uh, consultant. And so they're still pestering the EPA to get us a, I mean, they feel that we probably can. That's what I thought the letter said. Is there no restriction? That, that we, yeah, but but they still want the EPA to sign off on that. So if we, well, have we ever looked at the deed? That's that was my question ever, originally. Anybody can. It should be pretty straightforward. They must have given us a deed, and if they did, if there aren't any covenants, registry, not much to be done. Go for it. Register you. Well, I mean, I still want to. I I want to be careful and cautious to make sure that we don't run afoul of anything that the EP that the federal well, government says. Have we, but have we looked at the deed? I guess that's the question. Um, I can't recall, Andy. We, yeah. It's been a while since since we've been talking about this. But uh, no, I, 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 I just I, I I would be I'd be more comfortable with the federal government says. Yeah. So we could be three years. Any other? My suggestion is to look at the deed, and if the deed has us free and open, then we ought to send the federal government letter and say we're going to act in 60 days if we don't have a response. Then we're going to. Are there any other questions or comments? I would just sit there and say that uh, the town hall lane on Halloween was awesome. The mm -hmm. trunk or treat, it was very good. So thank yeah. you for all the municipal staff that came down and worked through that yeah. on Thursday. Yeah, it's very nice. Thank you. Right. Are we ready? I think so. Into so executive session. Uh, well, wait a minute. Town council comment. Oh, that was just. We just had that. Oh, we just did. Oh, yeah. well, then I'm sorry. I, I, I have one more thing okay. to add. Um, I would like to make a motion to form a committee headed by Aaron White to review the town charter um, and make uh, changes if necessary and be able to present it to town council uh, within 60 days. It's not feasible. We're not. Gonna, okay. We're, we're going to go through the process of um, if that's something that we'd like to do, then we need to go through the process uh, as stated. Uh, and we will be talking with our town attorney uh, to get that guidance as well. But that needs to go through the whole process with the committee and the town postings and public hearings as well. Um, so you said with Aaron, um, we'll take that into consideration, but I don't think that that's something that would do an emotion. Oh, okay. At this point, we'll All right. To the calendar. We should take that into consideration. Okay. That's that's that could be a process. Process. It has to be an agenda yes. item to do. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we would. Okay. So to make good. a motion that we move into executive session uh, with uh, section one MRSA, section four or five, six A personnel matters. All right. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> All in favor? Just come. So move in.